Welcome to the Ask a Swim Pro Show. We are in Las Vegas, Nevada at the International Swim League World Final. My name is Ferris Sabati, founder and CEO of My Swim Pro, and I'm joined by two special guests, Dylan and Rob Kent. What's going on? Hey, we're Pleasure just excited to be here. To be here. <laughs> awesome. So yesterday, a, a big news announced. Um, why don't you go ahead and share the news? <laughs> so the big news uh, after the uh, huge uh, finale of the uh, first season of the uh, International Swimming League was uh, that they're expanding. And uh, there's two expansion teams, one in uh, Tokyo and the other one in Toronto. And I will be the GM of the Toronto team and Dylan it will be the assistant GM of the Toronto team. That's awesome. Congratulations. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Congratulations. So for those who are not familiar with the ISL, let's kind of take a step back. Like, what is the ISL? So the ISL is the brainchild of uh, uh, a very wealthy European businessman who has uh, essentially funded the first year or two of the ISL to get it up and going. It is the first international professional swimming league. And the idea is that it takes uh, professionals, well, the elite swimming into the world of professional sports. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first year start, started with uh, four teams in Europe and four teams in the United States. And now uh, there'll be five teams in uh, the Americas, including Canada and the United States, and uh, five teams in Eurasia, including um, uh, Japan. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, Dylan, what is it like being at this meet compared to any other swim meet? Yeah, I think the energy that, uh, that ISL has really brought to the table in this format is, is something quite unique and I think something that you're seeing swimmers and fans really appreciate. The swimmers, you know, it's pretty apparent that they're having a good time on the pool deck and, uh, and in the racing, some fast times we saw over the weekend. And uh, for fans, you know, when you think about swimming and all the meets that uh, your average age group parent or swim fan went to, mm -hmm. when you're watching, you know, hours of heats yeah. and hours <laughs> of finals and B finals and C finals to watch yeah. one heat full of Olympic medalists is is pretty exciting and pretty entertaining. And I think uh, I think you'll see the sport grow a lot that way. Definitely. So two new teams announced for the next season of ISL, um, Japan, Canada. What? What does that entail? Like, what, what's that going to look like? Well, that's a, a good question. <laughs> that's um, we're now about twelve hours into it. Sure, sure. So I uh, still Fresh little. News. But yeah. there, there is, um, from our point of view, um, first of all, we're very excited about this mm -hmm. and growing the sport and growing the sport in Canada, and growing the sport in Toronto, mm -hmm. and and all that. But then, the, starting this morning, uh, the brass tacks. Uh, we mm -hmm. we start with that and how to build a franchise. Mm -hmm. And that is kind of where uh, my background comes in. I have a swimming background, but also a business background mm -hmm. because as much as uh, this is a swimming venture, it's also a business venture. For and sure. this is uh, not supposed to be a little Mickey Mouse league. This is yeah, real, yeah. this is the big leagues literally. Yes, yes. And we want this to be a professional sport. And to mm -hmm. do that, we need to have uh, big name sponsors. Mm -hmm. We need to have big name broadcasting, we mm -hmm. have the big name stars. Yeah. And uh, w putting all that together, part of it is uh, uh, drafting and selecting and, uh, mm -hmm. and finding the right uh, swim team. And mm -hmm. then the other part of it is putting together a business plan and and uh, business model that yeah. will make it a su sustainable uh, yeah, yeah. professional sport. Yeah, there's definitely two sides of it. You have the business side, you have the swimming side. Dylan, on the swimming side, yesterday we were talking like, hundred plus medals in a room like what's it like to have that kind of athlete that level of elite athletes all together and for you guys to be able to recruit you know a handful of those onto your team in Canada and outside what's that gonna be like I think as a swim fan it's super exciting you know yeah. the quality of the sport is mm -hmm. is there you know yeah. you're you don't have to sell you've got the, the athletes mm -hmm. in so you're, you're selling the best possible format that swimming has to offer mm -hmm. with the best possible athletes. In terms of specific recruiting to the Toronto team, you know, obviously as an expansion team, we've got our, our work cut out for us yeah. a little bit. Um, you know, you saw how important uh, some of the sprints are yeah. um, with the skins and stuff like yeah. that. So getting some stars, I think, you know, we're fortunate enough to have some good Canadian talent. So that's obviously uh, will be an, a, a draw mm -hmm. for us and a, and a focus. But um, 
yeah, it's, it's you know, mm -hmm. something that uh, now we have to strategize on, you know, who's the right fit for the team and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and really building a strong team that can, uh, can bring in fans yeah. and generate excitement. Yeah, and on the business side, as general manager, like what, it, what does that mean? For those who are not familiar, like what would a general manager do, you know, in this league specifically, maybe they're not familiar with professional sports at all. Like what, what does that entail? Well, um, I think <laughs> going back to one of uh, Dylan's answers too, is uh, we're all uh, swim nerds enough that uh, mm -hmm. we're still walking around starstruck by uh, yeah, all the, sure. the uh, <laughs> power in the room there. Um, yeah. But once you get over that, like you say, okay, now how do we build this thing? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think one of the key things is uh, going after the low-hanging fruit, which is marketing to the swimmers. Mm -hmm. First of all, we'll get the swimmers in the door, mm -hmm. get them hooked on it, which I think is a, literally an untapped market because mm -hmm. it there has been yeah. nothing for it. So I think that'll be a, a mm -hmm. maybe not easy, but that'll be the obvious place to go. Mm -hmm. And we start building the bu business model uh, on that. And there's a lot of, if you build it, they will come mm -hmm. type mm -hmm. philosophy to this. We have mm -hmm. the a, the a -est of the A-level mm -hmm. uh, athletes. athletes yep. And then we have, as you've probably, uh, some of your fans have seen, the production value oh, yeah. is way beyond the scope of yeah. anything that's ever approached Light swimming. Light lasers. Oh, yeah. it, it is uh, spectacular. So you've got that. So mm -hmm. the, the third angle is marketing. And mm -hmm. that's what we have to do. And we have to uh, sit down with professional mm -hmm. marketing teams and mm -hmm. come up with uh, the best way to do it. But the first uh, and most obvious way is to go after the swimmers. Then you go after the interested mm -hmm. people and, and broaden your, your base mm -hmm. and everything from there. Yeah. But you start with the obvious is you, you solidify your base. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Let's go back to the, the, spec, the spectator element of this and, and you, we talked about lasers and stuff. Dylan, what, what is it, describe what the venue is like and we'll put some B-roll of what, what it is. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, because putting in B-roll is going to describe it a lot better than, uh, <laughs> so than what, what So I what can. is it? <laughs> It really is an experience. You know, you, uh -huh. you think of a swim meet and there's exciting races. I think we all, you know, have our own favorite Olympic mm -hmm. moments and things like that mm -hmm. that we've seen that, uh, you know, you can remember where you were when you saw Phelps yeah. win eight gold medals yeah. or, or Jason Lezak's uh, yeah. <laughs> relay in 2008, things yeah. like that. Um, so you still have that caliber, you know, obviously of mm -hmm. the racing, but the experience with, uh, like you said, the, the lights and the laser, and they have a world-class DJ with DJ. music in between. And it, it's stuff that even the music that you might not, you know, notice individually on its mm -hmm. own, but all the production value combined, I think really creates an exciting atmosphere. And mm -hmm. it, it's hard to go in there mm -hmm. not excited, even For if, sure. uh, you know, you, you're not the world's biggest swimming fan mm -hmm. and uh, and go into it pretty new to the sport. I think just mm -hmm. the excitement is pretty contagious. Yeah, cool. So this is this is a new opportunity, new venture, new excitement. Uh, but this isn't your first rodeo in the swimming space building something up. So tell me about Global Swim Series. Um, what is that? Sure. So <clears throat> uh, Dylan and I, well, I started a uh, uh, an open water swim team in Toronto uh, about 15 years ago. That grew into a race, which grew into a small series of, of open water races. And um, just a, a, a small, more informal group. Then Dylan and I kind of took it to the next level and decided, you know what, we, we should kind of do what the ISL has done t for elite professional mm -hmm. uh, swimming. We wanted to do for open water mm -hmm. mass participation. Mm -hmm. And so we expanded it globally, and now um, uh, just five years into it, we have over 200 races in 38 countries around the world, Woo. and it's still growing. And uh, yeah. they, it's it, again, it's the same. Uh, there's a lot of commonalities between the GSS and the ISL in that very, very underserved market that's mm -hmm. always been there. Yeah. So the, it's a lot of work. Don't get me wrong, but the the easy thing is, is it's all there. Mm -hmm. So we just had to move in, organize it, do it mm -hmm. well, and we're we're growing that as well. So mm -hmm. that, uh, on top of uh, being a, a GM for the ISL, uh, Dylan and I will also be running the Global Swim Series. Awesome. And so growing the sport of swimming, I think that's all. All three of us are passionate yeah. yes, about. Yes, yes. There's a commonality in, there. In, in, in different ways, um, Dylan. What's that like to be able to? literally grow the sport of swimming in different different avenues well i think that's you know what we all got into this at 
yeah. the start of things, right? Mm. You get into it to follow a passion. Um, you know, we were, all three of us here were all swimmers at one point, and um, well, still are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe to lesser degrees than yeah, the yeah, ISL yeah. that we <laughs> saw yesterday, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, you get in it on uh, on a passion, you know. Mm -hmm. I think until maybe current format, uh, big dollar signs wasn't mm -hmm. the reason that you got involved in yeah. uh, in, in swimming business. It was to follow mm -hmm. a passion and hopefully you could create something from it. But I think uh, one of the unique things about being in a sport that where the community is kind of so small mm -hmm. is that we all do want to grow the sport and see what's best for the sport. And I, you know. We love swimming and we'd like to see more people fall in love with the sport and mm -hmm. uh, I, we're fortunate enough to have a variety of different ways that mm -hmm. uh, we can do that now. Yeah, I, I think just to add on to that too, I think, um, and we've spoken about this before, that as much as swimming is a niche sport, it isn't basketball, football, baseball, mm -hmm. hockey, mm -hmm. but it is a very global sport oh, yeah. and it isn't something that uh, you have to explain uh, some niche sport to everyone and try and sell it yeah. around the world and everything. Swimming. It's there. <laughs> People know it. People get it. And and it, with ISL and even with open water, um, it's like racehorsing. Like the first guy to the wall wins. Hey, that I get it. That's yeah. for the layman. And then you can dig as deep as you want and, and right. get into the nuances. And it's there's so mm. much fun to be had there. And and unlike uh, you know maybe I don't want to pick on any other niche sport out there, but these are not just the best swimmers in the world. Mm -hmm. These are some of the best athletes in the world. Oh, for sure. So bar none, like a, no excuses there. These are the best athletes yeah. in the world. So you're not starting with B level guys or C level guys and trying to build it up this and then- the cream of the crop. Yeah. This, you're <laughs> exactly. starting with the, the very best. So that's uh, yeah. that's pretty encouraging uh, way to start uh, mm -hmm. a new venture. Cool, and uh, final, final comments here. So if we were to project forward five to 10 years, where do you see the sport of swimming with regards to that mainstream, you know, appeal, and, and how do how do people think about swimming, whether it's ISL, GSS, or anything else? Um, I think, if, if, like I say, we we'd love for it to be as big as NFL mm -hmm. and sure. and all that type of thing. It will it will arguably never be there, mm -hmm. but I think it will be more international yep. than. Baseball is never going to be as international as the ISL right. already is or the GSS already is, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and there's certain natural things mm -hmm. and it'll only broaden the depth and, mm -hmm. and uh, scope of, mm -hmm. of swimming around the world that both of those and, and they'll fit in mesh nicely. Um, that's what we believe anyway, is that the ISL mm -hmm. has is showcasing the best of the best of the mm -hmm. best. Yeah. And then you also have. Uh, people experiencing a fun vacation, going to yeah. swim a race in Barbados and doing a mass participation race, yeah. and all of that put together, and mm -hmm. media like mm -hmm. yourself yeah. that uh, are promoting it and showing how mm -hmm. to train and get involved mm -hmm. and participate more, and yeah. I'd really like to do it, but I don't know how to swim that well, and you go, oh, mm -hmm. I, there's this cool uh, yeah, yeah. app that Here's you can get, yeah. and <laughs> oh, I'd like to go on a vacation with this, oh, and we should go and watch this professional, yeah. and this all comes together. And I, the other thing mm -hmm. that's out there that's happening right now too, is the convergence of media. Media oh, yeah. is changing, like, yeah. <laughs> the, like not uh, five years ago to the next five years, like six months ago yeah. to now, where yeah. you have the streaming companies like mm -hmm. Netflix and then, yeah. They're being challenged by um, Disney and all, yeah. all these other ones. Well, we happen to be right on the forefront of that. So mm -hmm. part of the ISL's model is to be cutting edge and is to mm -hmm. tie in technology. Yeah. So it's interesting you say, like in five years, where will we be? Well, it's hard to say because everything's changing. But <laughs> yes. the, I think we're all right in the sweet spot of uh, being in the right place at the right time with the right interests. Yeah. And uh, it, it's going to be a really fun five years. Mm -hmm. Cool. Dylan, anything? Uh, yeah, I, I, swimming? <laughs> just to kind of add on to uh, what Rob was saying, but I think one of the unique things about swimming to grow mm -hmm. as a sport is it's a very interactive sport for all mm -hmm. the reasons that Rob said and you know all the, mm -hmm. the benefits that my swim pro has is, you know, if you watch for as big of a sport as the NFL or hockey or mm -hmm. golf or, or what have you, a lot of them, you know, 
not everyone after they're watching a football game goes and laces up the, <laughs> the pads and, sure. and gets out there. Whereas swimming, you know, it, it promotes a healthy, active lifestyle. You can swim when you're 80 years old. It's very low impact. So to be able to have a product like the ISL where you can watch the best athletes in the sport and then also have, you know, mass partition participation events like Global Swim Series where you can go out, have a fun time, get literally dive into it and uh, and then have things like my swim pro where you, you've got literally an on your wrist um, mm -hmm. access to, to high quality mm -hmm. training and information yeah. it, it you can just see how people can get can interact with the sport mm -hmm. in a way that uh, I think is unique yeah I mean it's, it's a really exciting time I think if we go back 10 years even five years ISL didn't exist my swim pro didn't exist GSS getting started right yeah, yeah. and now look where we are and it's exciting to think where five years from now yeah, it will be. For sure. So uh, that's awesome. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us on the Ask a Swim Pro Show here in Las Vegas, uh, wrapping up the International Swim League first season grand final. And we look forward to next season. Looking with, forward to seeing with you with at the, the new team. Yeah, with the general, general manager and assistant general manager, Rob and Dylan Kent. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And we'll see you guys. Thanks. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye.